We're really, I mean, he's a playwright who's still alive, he's still working. He's currently working at the theatre called Zakoenji in Tokyo. Um, very active playwright and occasional director and mm -hmm. as his company. Um, what, what, what can we say about this piece? I mean, it's very much, uh, so it's almost like, it reminds me of the, the horror film Ring or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think you can tell here it deals with a particular contemporary social issue. Mm. Uh, Japanese word for it is hikikomori, um, basically shut-ins. Uh, not shut-ins who are elderly people, but people uh, younger, generally younger people. Um, mostly men, uh, there are a few uh, who are women, uh, who uh, retreat almost completely from the outside world. Um, and of course they need to be supported somehow, uh, usually by uh, their parents, their mothers, uh, who provide the food and uh, other sort of... Um, uh, needs uh, for them, but they uh, live in their rooms and uh, do not associate with the outside world. Um, the uh, play is called The Attic, and uh, for any of you who have seen this play, it's a very interesting staging uh, with a kind of garret-shaped um, set on the stage, uh, very cramped, um, and in a way is a kind of uh, expressive of the uh, cramped claustrophobic or maybe even agoraphobic uh, nature of, of contemporary uh, urban society in Japan um, and uh, the uh, kind of social pressures uh, that, that uh, people feel and uh, the sense of wanting to crawl uh, into uh, a small space and, and, and shut out the world. Now, uh, it's a series of vignettes, so each, uh, each little episode uh, has a different cast of characters and sometimes even a different situation. Uh, sometimes the attic is an elevator, uh, sometimes the attic is actually uh, a mountain hut, and these mountain climbers are trying to uh, seek shelter inside it. Uh, so uh, every five to ten minutes, um, the scene keeps changing in a way. Uh, but it is literally framed in this cramped little space on stage. Mm. Sakate has a, a, a long history of writing plays about, um, I guess, social questions and social problems. So he's really dealing with the, the kind of personal in relation to contemporary Japanese society. Um, yeah, um, he's, he's coming out of uh, the 60s background in many respects. Uh, he uh, studied uh, with another playwright and director uh, by the name of Yamazaki Tetsu, who had uh, himself uh, worked uh, with one of the sort of uh, great culture figures of the 1960s, uh, Karajudo, uh, actor, director, and playwright. Um, and uh, Sakate um, got his start in the uh, early 1980s with his own, uh, with his own uh, company uh, called Phosphorescent Troop in English and uh, has been uh, very active since the 1980s in writing very kind of uh, topical uh, and politically uh, charged uh, works of one kind or another. Uh, there is some kind of uh, overlap in some respects uh, with the kind of subject matter that uh, Inoue Hisashi dealt with, uh, but here I think uh, it's uh, darker and more absurdist than, uh, than uh, Hisashi's uh, dramaturgy. Yeah, his plays, I think, sometimes are, are, can be compared to people like Abe Kobo in that they're a very absurdist, almost existential approach to language. But on the other hand, some of his other plays have, have been more socialist, social realist or even, even in a kind of documentary theatre style. Yeah, know. I think documentary theatre is a really good, ex uh, good way of describing a lot of the stuff that he's doing, yeah. where he takes something like, for example... Uh, American bases in Okinawa, and he, you know, does a play on that, or he does a play on censorship in in, in the MacArthur period uh, during the American occupation of Japan and uh, Japanese war responsibility, and and the extent to which you know the emperor was responsible for uh, for um, starting the war. Um, so those sort of things. Yeah. Hmm. Well, um, I think we'll take our seats again, and then we'll hear the. Uh, Third excerpt 